Have you ever wondered if being negative could bring you good things? That's what we'll talk about today. One who knows when he can fight and when he cannot fight will be victorious. Sun Tzu. Today, we're going to talk about a book by Bobby Knight, who's a famous basketball coach, and he wrote a book, The Power of Negative Thinking, an unconventional approach to achieving positive results. And if you remember Bobby Knight when he was actually a coach, he was famous for yelling and telling everybody the truth when it came to press conferences or other situations. And you might find it odd that a fellow like him would write a productivity book because in our age, positivity is everything. Having a good outlook, being positive, being optimistic is what everyone talks about. So I thought I would give us another view at maybe how being negative could help us. He talks about some famous positivity people out there, like Norman Vincent Peale, who wrote a book, The Power of Positive Thinking. And he said it came out in 1952. His view of how things should be and that book's view of how things should be is completely the opposite because he is about preparing yourself for actually doing the hard things instead of just saying positive things that will encourage you, but maybe not prepare you. He says, quote, let me be clear, I'm not arguing for being a strict negativist, for walking around with a sour look, for always seeing the dark side and expecting failure. That is not my intent, quite the opposite. I'm saying being alert to the possible negatives in any situation is the best way to bring about positive results. And he also thinks that ignoring things that could go wrong will cause us to fail. And so it's dangerous to actually have this positive attitude all the time because we're going to then gloss over everything that could go wrong that we could prepare for. Talks about it if you go outside and you say, you know what, I have positive thoughts that today is going to be beautiful and it rains all day. Did you prepare for the rain? Did you bring a raincoat? Did you have an alternative venue in case it did rain? Nope, you were having positive thinking instead of having some negative thoughts about what could go wrong. And as a coach, he says that his job is to prepare people for what's really going to happen and not just having a positive outlook. If he can't teach them how, he says, not to lose, he can't teach them to win either. He says in the end, you'll have no chance of winning if you don't address the very easy ways that you could lose. And nothing feels worse than knowing the woulda, coulda, shouldas, which means that if you would have done that, you would have won. You would have gotten your goal. You would have won the game. He says that we all have this whole list of what he calls hollow platitudes. We could do anything if we really wanted to. Could we? The truth is you can't. Could I be an NBA star if I did all the exercises I was supposed to do? Nope, I still couldn't. If I got in the most perfect shape I could get into, I would still not be an NBA star. Why? One, I don't have that kind of talent. Also, I'm really short, so it's never going to happen. And these platitudes just get us into trouble because we think of the wrong things to do. We go after the wrong things to do, and then we feel awful when we don't get them. And he said the secret to all of this is having discipline, which he says is, quote, recognizing what has to be done, doing it as well as you can do. For example, in basketball, if you don't know what it is you need to do and you don't do as well as you possibly could be doing it, and you don't do it every time. Sometimes you forget. That's my big one. There are times where I totally forget. I just forget them on a diet. I forget that I have goals with it and I see something and I just want it. He says in the end that willpower is not enough. We all have willpower, yet some of us don't achieve the things that we want to do. He says it's good to have perseverance, but it's also good to know what's going to go wrong. Because if you persevere in the wrong direction, you're also going to be in a bad situation. So you have to realize when something isn't the right thing to do and what's smarter yet is going a different direction when something's not working. He says the cliche is throwing good money after bad. 
That means if you're in a bad investment financially and it's tanking and you know it's going to continue to tank, maybe it's time to change your perspective and do something more successful. And he said that's where the power of negative thinking really comes in. Because when you look at things with a negative eye, you're looking at the positive things in your life with a lot of skepticism. You're looking at the negative things in your life with a lot of skepticism. And that thinking and deciding when to change your mind, when to continue doing something is how you're going to be successful. And that negative analysis of it will make you better about it. I have a friend who's great at this kind of thing. She is able to figure out every time what it is that's going to go wrong. It could seem like it's a negative attribute, but it also means that she always knows what needs to be fixed. And if there's no fix for it, she just knows when the weak point's going to be. That's strength, and that's really helpful for everything. He says in the end that competition is never static. So if you're playing in basketball and you know that your competition has these strengths, these weaknesses, and that you prepare for them with your negative thinking because you're going to think about what could possibly go wrong, that's not a static thing. And same thing in your own life. If you're planning on living a more healthy way of being more financially successful, you lay out this plan, stuff changes. It changes all the time. And so you have to have that dynamic negative thinking so that you can keep your eye out for when something drastically changes. For example, if you have this certain lifestyle and you're able to put away this certain amount of money because you know what your budget is, there are a lot of things that go out in the financial world that might have to do with your pay. It might have to do with what things cost. And suddenly the games change and you have to be agile so that you can go in a new direction or just tilt the direction you've been going in just a little bit so it comes out better. He says you can't rely on luck. A good team can win with luck, but a bad team will never win or rarely win, even if they're very lucky. You can't rely on it. All you can do is try to stack all the cards in your favor so that you can win with the clear mind that you have. A lot of people do negative thinking in terms of the if-then statement. If I don't do this, then that won't happen. If I don't go to bed on time, I won't feel good in the morning. If I don't go grocery shopping for healthy foods, I won't have anything healthy to eat. If I don't have any clean clothes to go exercise in, I'll never exercise the next day. And he says the true danger of positive thinking comes in overconfidence. That is really dangerous because overconfident people want to win. Not confident people want to win, but people who use negative thinking and try to analyze it also want to win, but behind them, they have the structure in place to know when their confidence is true, their confidence is false, and when they still have more things they have to work on. So when you understand your own limits, your own strengths, your own weaknesses better, that's when you're actually going to be able to go after what you want to do in a more honest and realistic way. You can't just wander into a good pattern in life. You have to actually go after and work on the things that are going to prevent you from getting what you want actively. He suggests that that's exactly what insurance is. We think that we like our house, that we like our car, we drive to work every day. But when something happens, like our house burns down or our car gets in a wreck, we have an insurance. And that's negative thinking. It's always there prepared in case something bad happens, in case we need to do something drastic because something drastic happened to us. And if we use our overconfidence and instead double down on the things that's causing us harm or not getting us our goals, we're going to be not better for it, not achieving the difficult thing in the face of all this adversity. We're going to be twice as stuck as we were before. But he says, remember in the Bible, that seven out of 10 commandments are negative. Thou shalt not. So he says his advice lines up with what God does as well. He believes that you shouldn't stay where you're at, that you should always strive to be better. Right now, what you're doing today is not as great as you can be, and that you should look for improvements. 
act with evidence and be skeptical. Don't trust everything that you see because it's important that you test not only yourself for your assumptions, but what other people are telling you as well. Right now, the same old, same old, he says, is not acceptable. When you improve, you'll make fewer mistakes, you'll do better, that we should always be critical of the belief of ourselves, the belief other people have, and test everything. Look at everything we can do. He gives a quote from George Bernard Shaw. Some see things as they are and ask why. I see things as they could be and ask why not. And you only get there by giving a critical, skeptical eye to the way things are right now and figuring out how to improve on them. And it's really important when you're demanding things from other people or you're demanding things from yourself that those are actually things you can accomplish. It does no good to demand from yourself something you can't do. If your budget doesn't allow you to save 20% of your budget, don't demand it of yourself. Try to figure it out. But if it's not possible at this point, figure out a demand you can make on yourself that you can actually accomplish. You want to make sure that you're not giving yourself the minimum either, the minimal amount of thing you can do. Because if you don't strive to make yourself better, it's not going to help either. So finding that right spot is important. He said that successful leadership is being hard to please. If you're always easy to please, then you're not really going to get the best out of your team, yourself, the people around you. He says in the end that the famous quote, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, is terrible because we should always be looking for the things that we should fix. If we don't go after and make those things better, we're never going to be better and we're never going to end the game differently. If we want to win the game, we got to start thinking about what we can fix and what we can change. So my challenge to you is look for something that needs a little attention. Something where you've been saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Instead, think, if it isn't broken, what can I do to make it better? And find that one thing that you could improve right now with some real honesty. And our fun entertainment advice of the week comes from Home Alone. There's no way on earth we're going to make this plane. It leaves in 45 minutes. Think positive, Frank. Uh, you be positive. I'll be realistic. That's right. It's hard to tell the difference between someone being realistic or someone being negative or someone being positive and someone being silly. In the end, they made the flight. So maybe it wasn't correct being realistic in this case. But in other situations that aren't comedy movies, being realistic is probably the right way to go. All right, everyone, thanks so much. I hope you like the podcast. Please remember that you can always email me at jill at smallstepspod.com. And if you could please tell a friend about the podcast, I'd appreciate it. Thanks so much.